what is really interesting to me about the whole thing with sugars, actually, by the way, that sugars were how I got interested in nut- all nutrients and nutraceutical routes. It was, uh, I believe it was Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, who was an idol of mine in medical school. Uh, and he, uh, he had a wonderful testimonial with, I think he had his aggressive kind of prostate cancer. And he talked about how the nutrients helped in his recovery. He still did the surgery and went the whole medical route, but he used the sugars in addition to that. And his, his results were far beyond what he could have gotten just by using the medical routes alone. And just listening to him and hearing his story. And, and, and from that, I began to delve more and more into these sugars. And I'm sure, again, people, I mean, they're still wondering <laughs> after listening <laughs> to people about sugar, they're like, what are these people talking about? And, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get into it some some more but just it was from there that i now realized how effective this could be sugars could be even for brain function and from dr reg i began to hear story after story after story about how this uh they were able to address brain conditions that were um according to medical science impossible to be addressed right. and so that's really really what got me into it so yeah definitely would love to do for us to talk some more now, the main thing I'm hearing you say is replication, that it helps in the replication of, um, of cells, uh, helps them replicate more effectively. But let's talk about it, it with regards to the brain function. How do these sugars, uh, and I'm, I probably should get, a, get some, some picture of the sugars and put them on or something, but how do these sugars specifically help with brain function? Great question. So <clears throat> we can... Uh, you know, we, I guess some of this is a bit theoretical still, <clears throat> because again, we haven't had enough money to fund really what would we, we would consider to be the most definitive study to date. But what we do know from the, uh, the, the research that we've conducted so far <clears throat> is that giving people these high doses of polysaccharides results in several things. First of all, Lower is inflammation. So this is obviously, as you know, a big factor, not only in dementia, but everything else. Everything, you know, go to any section of the medical or scientific literature related to human health, and there is some aspect of it related to inflammation. And of course, chronic inflammation is what we're referring to here. We're not referring to acute inflammation, which is obviously very beneficial in the context of, you know, being sick with a a virus or bacteria or having trauma. That acute effect in, uh, inflammation is obviously very important for us and helps us heal. But the chronic dysregulated systemic inflammation that gets out of hand over time, this is a very important issue that needs to be addressed for just about you know anybody you could pick. I mean, I'm sure there are very optimally healthy people out there that have regular low levels of inflammation. But for those of us that have different types of conditions, uh, getting this inflammation under control is very important. So what we showed in the Alzheimer's study was that we could actually lower TNF-alpha and VEGF. These are two proteins that classically have been looked at in heart disease and cancer. But we were, we were, our group was probably one of, if not the first to show we could actually lower that in in, um, Alzheimer's disease. So that's one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is looking at immune modulation or immune function and how that interacts with all the other major organ systems, particularly the central nervous system, and then even more specific, the brain. So <clears throat> obviously we know now, uh, and it's still an evolving science, it's still an evolving field of how the immune system talks to all of our other major organ systems. But we know that, and actually I'm just doing something right now, I, I've, I've tapped into a new analysis linking immune function with cognition that I hope will, will be another paper that we will publish sometime this year, but one very important aspect of immune function is the CD4 to CD8 ratio. And as we get older, that's an even more important indicator of our overall immune function status. So CD4 being our T helper cells and CD8 being our uh, cytotoxic cells, we wanna keep that ratio CD4 to CD8 as high as possible. And especially for people that have dementia, and especially older people, that's even more important to keep aware or to be aware of. And if that if that ratio gets low, then what you're actually um, you end up with even a greater risk for things like heart disease and uh, and cancer on top of just general immune function. So we were able to increase that measure, 
Hi, I'm Dr. David Ajibade. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like to see more videos, please click on the subscribe button below. And if you want to be notified of when we upload other videos, please click on the bell button so that you can be notified. God bless. Take care. Bye.